Hey everybody, Ryan here at eTrailer. Today on our 2022 Nissan Rogue Sport, we're gonna be showing you how to install the eTrailer.com trailer hitch receiver. But before we do that, why don't we check this one out and make sure it's gonna be the right hitch for you. As the name implies with the Rogue Sport, uh, people use these SUVs to do a lot of different things. You know, they real active, get out, do some bike riding, maybe pull some trailers around. And so having a hitch back here just makes sense. Um, with this one, it's going to allow you to do all those different tasks, whether you are trying to use an accessory or, or pull your smaller trailer around. And it's also going to look good too, uh, at least in my opinion. You know, if it were me, I wouldn't want uh, a super noticeable hitch back here because the cars do look good, right? And with this one, really the only thing you're going to be able to see is the receiver tube opening. The rest of it will be pretty much hidden. Um, and out of the hitches available, this one's probably going to be my favorite, especially in terms of appearance, uh, really because of the finish on it. So it has this uh, matte black uh, type finish, and I think it does a really good job of actually matching the uh, plastic bumper here. It looks almost identical. And so to me, it kind of puts off uh, uh, or almost looks like a factory type option. With this being a class three hitch, it is gonna have the two inch by two inch receiver tube opening. Uh, this is a super common size and a lot of different stuff will work with it. It is going to use the standard 5 eighths pin and clip. Keep in mind though, pin and clip don't come included with the hitch. If you need one though, not a big deal. You can always get it here at your trailer and it is going to have loop style safety chain openings and these are going to provide us with more than enough space to use just about any size hook that our trailer might have on it. Now why don't we just go ahead we'll grab a couple of measurements and these will help us figure out uh, what hitch mounted accessories will work best. We go from the ground to the top inside edge of the receiver tube opening that's going to be about 14 inches so if you do plan on pulling a trailer around, chances are pretty good. You can use a ball mount that has a straight shank or one that has a rise in it. You go from the center of the hitch pin hole to the edge of the rear bumper. That's gonna be about five inches. And you can use that measurement to help figure out that if any folding type accessories you might have can be stored in that upright position without hitting the back of your road. Other than that though, you know, at the end of the day, a hitch you really can't go wrong with. Uh, personally, this would probably be the one I'd pick out for my own Rogue Sport if I had one. Um, I mean, it's going to open up your opportunities on what you can do and look good. Uh, I will say there's a Kurt hitch available as well that looks pretty much identical to this, uh, except the finish. It has more of a gloss black finish. Um, so if you like that better, that's an excellent choice as well. It's just going to be, you know, kind of depend on on your preference uh, and what one you like more is in terms of the appearance goes. But as far as getting the hitch installed, really not too bad. Um, there's only a handful of steps. Um, and so as long as you take your time, you know, you really shouldn't run into too many issues. But speaking of that, why don't we go ahead and put the hitch on together now. To begin our installation, we're gonna be underneath the back of our road. And uh, right off the bat, we're going to be working over here on the passenger side, right in this area. We're going to have to get to an emissions canister, pull a couple screws out, lower it down, and that'll give us some more room to work. If you look up right here, this is that emissions canister. So there's going to be a bracket. You're going to have a 10 millimeter nut. And pull this off. And then there will be another nut. Right here in this area, it's gonna be really hard to see, but if you kind of bend down on your heat shield, you can actually feel it uh, pretty easily. And so, I'm gonna use a regular box wrench here to get that nut removed. And I believe that's all that's holding this on. So there's the nut. And then, Kind of just pull this down and we're just going to kind of push it over here like this so there's that other bracket where the nut was we'll just kind of let this hang here that way it'll give us some extra space to work now if you look we can get our tow hook here removed so it's going to be held in place with six 18 millimeter head bolts 
So you got three on the bottom and then three just like it on the side here. So we'll go ahead, grab our socket and an extension and get all these removed. So get that final one out of there. It should drop down and we can set it off to the side. Now if we move over here to the driver's side, we're gonna have a hole that we need to enlarge a little bit. That way we can get some of our hardware into the frame. And so this is a hole that you wanna open up uh, and you wanna do this just large enough. That way we can get our spacer block and our carriage bolt up inside of there. So you can use a few different things. Um, I like to use a grinder bit like this you could probably use a step style drill bit, um, whatever you got really. I'm sure you could use a hand file too. It'd probably take you some time though and you'd have to be patient to open this up big enough. But regardless, we need to get it uh, uh, bigger. That way we can get the hardware in. Got that hole enlarged and like I said, just big enough to allow us to get the head of our carriage bolt in there as well as the spacer block. So we're good there. Since we did expose some bare metal, I do suggest just taking some spray paint and just putting a layer on it to help prevent any rust or corrosion in the future. So we'll give that a few minutes to dry and come back and uh, move on to the next step. With the paint dry, now we can get our hardware in. So we're gonna have uh, two holes here, this one and this one. And what you wanna do is take your fish wire, it's coiled end of it, and push it up towards the access hole. And we're trying to get that to drop down through. Sometimes it's kinda, kinda tricky to get out. If you're having trouble, what I've done in the past is kinda line it up and put a bend in it and that'll usually help make it a little easier like that and then you're just going to take the carriage bolt and spacer block and thread that on and feed the hardware up into place drop it down and we're going to do the same exact thing here for this attachment point. The other attachment point that you're going to use over here on the driver's side will be this threaded weld nut. And so it's not a bad idea to spray these out with some penetrating oil and take a two brush to kind of clean out the threads. But over here, you're going to use a bolt and a conical tooth washer. Make sure the teeth on the washer are gonna face up towards the hitch. So when we're holding the hitch up, you'll simply just thread this uh, right in. Over on the passenger side, we're gonna have three attachment points. And these are all gonna be the weld nuts and we're just gonna use the same hardware uh, that we took off earlier that was originally holding on our tow hook. So that's, uh, that's what we're gonna do over here. Now with the next set of hands, you can take our hitch, raise it into position. So you want to run your fish wires through the appropriate holes in the hitch over here. And then we can lift it up. We're gonna go over the exhaust. That's how we get our hardware to drop down. And then you want to get at least one bolt started on each side, hand tight. That way the hitch will support itself while you work on the rest of the hardware. Once the hitch is up there, you can remove your pull wires. And then you're gonna take a flange nut for these bolts. And get them going. Once we have all the hardware in place and hand tight, you can come back with a three quarter or 
19 millimeter socket and snug everything down. With everything tight now, we need to make sure to come back with a torque wrench and tighten down all the hardware to the amount specified in the instructions. If you don't have a torque wrench, you can always get one here at e-trailer or a lot of times you go to your local auto parts store and we'll have one there available that you can rent. And that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the e-trailer.com trailer wrench receiver on our 2022 Nissan Rogue Sport.